so hello everyone uh, greetings of the day and uh, you know today now we are going to see uh, what is dpd why is it that important okay now uh, if you talk of rf front end and uh, you know digital uh, then dpd is the you know um, you know hot topic now and uh, you know means out of uh, yeah of course uh, power amplifiers and all that is you know uh, drawing attention attention to operate in many bands okay, but dpd now drawing much attention because uh, it is the major component that is used for the improving the efficiency of the power amplifier right so uh, before we move on to dpd what is dpd why it is required what is the significance of the dpd we we'll just know uh, we'll just you know quickly set up one context okay and uh, uh, you know context so why it is required where exactly it is uh, you know placed so all this information we can see now so uh, this is the you know or and radio unit uh, you know reference architecture this you can find from the here techplayon.com okay if you type you know in google or and reference architecture or on radio unit reference architecture then you will get this one okay here if you look at the ORU okay so ORU have I know do you know ORU do you interface okay, from here and uh, if it is not a you no know, uh, ORU say so, you know you can you, you have you have you know antenna either you know it uh, separately or you know inside the and are you itself okay now so when you open the RU and then find out, try to find out what is there inside the RU. This is the functional blocks that is inside the RU, radio unit basically. Okay. Yeah, earlier we call it as base stations, right? So my, my many of you uh, in the, the word RU you may not might not heard, but you know earlier we used to call it as BTS, right? Base station transceiver system, node B, G node B. So those are the different variant names of uh, you know uh, radio unit basically. So uh, this radio unit why because it is uniquely called you know because of this features and all. In 5G they call it as a G node B, but in ORAN they call it as radio unit. Okay. So radio unit consists of two things basically. One is so four things basically front all transport under which you have ECP, Sinky. UDP IP, TPS, IEEE, this protocol, you know, standard protocol, and then you can add a MACPI interface protocol, all those we have. Next comes lo fi, okay. So this is in, you know, almost in lo fi. You can see here that lower fi means, okay, physical layer. This is a physical layer. Uh, lower fi, you can see that FFT, IFFT. Uh, it's more of single passing basically. FFT, IFFT, we, that we use for single passing and all that, okay. Then PRAJ, PRAJ is for you know uh, random access channel uh, thing, and then pre coding, CP addition, okay, and then uh, digital beam forming. So this can be done in the either an uh, FPGA and ASCIS. ASICS. Initially, what we will do, we do the coding in the FPGA, then we'll make that into the ASIC. Okay, that's how it works, right? Next comes a digital front end. Okay, this is where this DPD fit into. Okay, now, uh, I'll come to that this point later. In this digital front end, you can see that digital down converter, digital up converter, digital pre distortion, crust factor reduction, and then you have you know interface like a power supply card and then PCI card and then RG45 connector to control these things and also go to connector. Okay. Apart from this, you will have uh, so many connectors and other other aspects will be there. Okay. And then comes RF front end unit. Okay. Here you can see that. Uh, the major component you can see that you know power amplifier okay before that you can so come in the flow that is there digital to analog converter the data that is, get, is getting from digital front end it will be converted to analog then it will get amplified to uh, and then you know to provide required output at the RU okay for example uh, you might have seen in the any paper uh, 40 watts RUs 20 watts RUs 30 watts RUs 60 watts RUs I don't think 60 watts may be there. So RU means RU output power means you know uh, output of power of the RU will be based on that it will be called as you know, uh, 
Yeah, see, uh, from digital front end, you will get signals somewhere around, you know, some man in negatives only, negative sign only. Then what you will do, you have to amplify and to convert that into unlock, digital to unlock. Then you have to amplify it. In receiver chain, what you will do, uh, you know, you will uh, uh, amplify through LNA. Then you will convert back to analog to digital. And the duplexer and then circulator will facilitate for the TXRX switches. So this is how the the overall picture, overall you know radio unit functional block will be. You have RF front end unit, digital front end, lower five front hall interface. Okay. Here, so why we go for this DPD? Okay, especially it will be working with along with the crest factor reduction. So uh, if you look at the definition, right? So you can see you know each functional module is described over here. Okay. And uh, uh, you can just you know simply you know for example the crest factor reduction, digital pre distortion, all the stuff will be there. And these are all the some of the you know uh, internal diagram. So what is happening at each layer and all that okay, is done. It is you know mentioned here. Uh, here you know over on category A R radio, over on category B radio. So recording is performed in various uh, like that you know based on the recording uh, performance in, in a function. All other other uh, aspects, it is categorized over category A and category B radios. Okay. Now we'll go and see uh, what is DPD, why we go for that. Okay. Then you will you know come to know. Okay. Uh, then especially this DPD is used to enhance the PA efficiency, right? Okay. So uh, here the thing is you know see why we we need to enhance the power amplifier. But I've studied in your book or anywhere, power amplifier, uh, you know, always tend to uh, reach, it is not ideal condition, right? You will have an input power at especially exponentially. For example, you are giving input power of, for example, 20 watts, uh, 20 dBm power, uh, your, and the power amplifier gain is 20 dB, then it, you should get, you will get to 40 dB, 40 watts, right? 40 dB, right? If you keep on increasing the input power, uh, 40, uh, 40 dB, right? So if you keep on increasing power from, for example, 20 dBm to 30 dBm, we will get a 50 dBm. But it should, it will not happen like that, right? If you, for example, if you increase the power to 50, 30 dBm, then uh, you may not get the 50 dBm power because efficiency will go down because and also be due to various factors. It can be due to bandwidth, it can be due to PA performance. So it's a main factor they call it as, you know, bandwidth because, you know, you have to amplify the signal. Uh, because you know, in between you may find uh, some uh, noise distortions because that is uh, that is coming from any other UEs, any other DUTs, any other uh, base stations, any other thing, any other source. Okay, distortion comes. Then what happens is the PA tend to amplify that. So, so the hence what uh, what we are doing. So for example, you are amplifying the signal. For example, 200 megahertz or 400 megahertz signal you are amplifying. You are exact you know required signal working signal. Then what you are doing, so if you amplify, if you use that, uh, uh, for example, if you use, amplifier will consume some power, right? Consume some power because, you know, it's a GAN PA or Doherty and any, any other PA. So it has a transistors and all the circuitry, everything is there. So to consume some power to generate or amplify the input signal, the input RF signal, right? To certain amount, with a certain gain, right? So which means, if you, uh, uh, you know, if you amplify the uh, the dist noise signal or dist you know uh, interference signal, then what is happening is your PA uh, uh, means you know PA is working for uh, apart from your uh, working band like a desired band, it is you know amplifying the noise signal as well. So therefore, it consume more power, but uh, whatever you expect for the desired signal, right? For example, you know, it is consuming more power. For example, uh, you are having 200 megahertz bandwidth uh, signal. Okay, you are uh, our own signal, desired signal. Then it is get amplified, it is consuming, for example, uh, amplifier efficiency, let's say 40%. Okay, which means 40% means what? Uh, you are, you know, your amplifier will, uh, you know, power will amplify the signal, uh, you know, uh, 40 dBm. For example, in order to get the 40 watts of output power, you are consuming 100 watts of power. Okay, let's say in this way. Okay, so 40% efficiency means what? You are consuming 100 watts to generate 40 watt signal. Okay, that's a, that is the efficiency. Okay, 
so so uh, if you add you know noise if you uh, amplifier uh, you know uh, uh, fall into non ep region that for that is noise getting amplified okay then what happens is uh, the amplifier you know uh, because the bandwidth is increasing and also the range of frequencies is getting increased and you know means you know uh, it is also in, you know amplifying the, the unwanted signal or noise signal or interference signal okay then what you are doing your power amplifier tend to consume more power after that what happens so then efficiency will go down okay so what you will how do you calculate efficiency so whatever power it is amplifying to the desired signal for example desired 200 megahertz signal how much power how much it is getting it is getting amplified that is where you know you calculate the efficiency right so you know uh, in learning region it may be amplifying other noise signal that doesn't matter for us right so efficiency calculated based on the desired signal right so therefore the efficiency will go down okay okay because uh, what energy conservation conservation theorem saying energy can be neither created nor destroyed energy can be transferred from one form of energy to another form of energy or one place to another place that's how the conservation theory is mentioned right okay so because you are uh, you know uh, your uh, amplifier is consuming some power okay but it is not effectively used for amplifying our desired rf signal it is also amplifying the undesired signal therefore efficiency is going down okay so in order to improve this efficiency we use this dpd okay digital free distortion so what it does is very simple i am not you know concept wise very simple but you know algorithm wise it is much 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 complex so what it does is it will generate the pre distortion signal okay it will generate the pre distortion signal and then uh, it will be exactly inversely proportional inverse inverse or you know uh opposite to the the noise signal so that it's you know it will add for example you know it will add it will you know purposely create a uh, distortion pre distortion signal it will add the, to the input signal then therefore during amplification it will nullify the the noise that is there because it's exactly opposite or we can say inverse so it nullify the uh noise that is there in this here okay so therefore you can improve the efficiency of the ru okay that's the main purpose for the dpd then comes cfr so what it does is when you have a noise right you will have a you know a constructive and destructive effect right when you have a constructive effect then what happens in the you know uh, for example this is the uh, some sine sin wave signal you will have a spike kind of thing right spike so those spikes uh, because you know if you have a constructive interference then what happens is spike will come so therefore you know uh, your uh, uh, audio devices you know in a, a function may get damaged right so what it does is crash factor reduction it will clip whatever you know beyond certain power level it will clip simply bandpass filter kind of thing okay it will simply clip that signal to certain power level only okay in order to save the things and then you know uh, make the, the power amplifier work so uh, we have to remember that dpd always work with the cfr okay there will be a feedback path also that we will discuss now okay if you want to know more about this then you can go to uh, analog devices uh, you know website and then type pre distortion you will find various uh, devices models and all that documents related documents some videos and also how it is used in very many places and what are all different uh, kind of dpd algorithms are there dpd things are there you can see here that you no know, uh, you can see high efficiency ps with the dpd so ad is ad9375 is the dpd okay if you click on this one uh, this is the pa vendor this is the part number and then how so the, you, can, you can just find out report so what are all various uh, you know pa vendors how they improved the uh dp uh, like you know pf performance using this dpd so all the documents are given here okay you can see here the how the architecture is looking like you can see your power supplies and then you have you know uh, this is the setup basically okay test block diagram then you will have you know uh how the things are there 
all all the informations are given here okay you can just just go through this spec okay you will try to find out you know ppd means you know you will always see aclr acpr uh, and evm uh, parameters okay that's how it works okay now if you want to know more about a uh, thing then you can also search in xilinx website general pd session and corvo website also you can uh, you know search for it and also many uh, like you know at, uh, infineon infineon website so anywhere you, know, you can find out you will you will be able you should be able to find out what is a digital pd samsung website also so everywhere you can find out uh, what is the digital pd session where exactly used what is the use case of that what is you know uh, building blocks because you know increase the so you can see here epd is the one of the most fundamental building blocks in wireless communication you know, it is used to increase the efficiency of the power amplifier that's how you get it if you want to know more about this and you can you go through each and every document then you can you will get a high level picture and also a low level picture also how you uh, in dpd works how uh, D when i have to use this dpd what is the algorithm behind that how it works how what is the feedback path and all that right now we can go to uh, you know so uh, my one of my friend was asking me that you know uh, do you have any other document so in that front now i searched for you know some of the document in the uh, internet then i found that you know r and s road and squash uh, they have one you know you know one uh, seminar i just attended and then uh, in that you know resources column uh, uh, i just clicked on that i found these documents are popping up okay so this was the seminar uh, the webinar basically investigate power amplifier linear session benefits in eda kind of thing then i that time you know they have showcased this one also you can see here interactive interactive direct dpd okay this is the white paper and another paper was there this is an linear session rf amplifier okay so why i opened this do document and then uh, so before we move on to this let's have a quick look on the you know uh, what are all different uh, building blocks of ors okay uh yeah, there is one another document called tip open rank okay so you need to have understood broad context right why this dpd is used where it is used exactly so how uh, it is uh, why it is required there and how it is fit into then you have to understand so uh, for example platform architecture this is how high level of block diagram will be there this is, how, this is the whole network architecture rrus bus then cus then you have a next generation core and epc then you when you start getting into uh, the things right you will come to know what are all functional blocks are there in the lower level for example you can see here that uh, radio unit functional model rf front end is that digital front end low fi ep sync udp and all that ethernet and mac uh, uh, thing okay then you can see that you know this is this is how, so 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 dpd cannot work alone right so it has to connect with the dpd uh, rf front end unit and also the low fi unit uh, for the signal passing and this is the digital front end unit this is the rf front end unit so it has to connect with all these guys right otherwise you cannot work so that's why we it is better to understand the high level architecture of the radio unit you can see that it has to connect with this and so that's how it works right otherwise you know uh, uh, you will not simply you will simply see okay dpd means it's digital position how why it is generated that we need to understand right that's the that that thing is discussed in this document Okay, high level understanding. Now comes now. Let's start with this, this, these three documents. Okay, now comes to here. Okay, this was the white paper. It is very very useful white paper by Rodes Quas. Okay, I just saw very much useful this this document basically. So amplifier and then specifically power amplifiers operate most efficiently at low close to their maximum output power, right? Okay, or close to their maximum output power. Okay, as my output power means beyond that it will be a linear uh, it will become not linear. Efficiency is the key parameter, uh, design parameter of power amplifier for several reasons in mobile devices, battery life is depend upon the signal significantly on the efficiency. Okay. In order to amplify some signal, it's consuming low more power, that's why battery lifetime is going down, right? In stationary uh, devices, operating cost depends on not only on the power consumption on the device itself. And you can see the cooling make up you know, 50 percent of the power bill, right? Because you know when you dissipate the heat, then it you will have to cool also, right? So most amplifiers so so called operate in you know amplifier in non linear range that is somewhere in compression range. So when you are operating your amplifier in non linear range range, okay, 
can you know uh, you will have increased the error vector magnitude and the out of band emission also start happening because you know you are amplifying the noise signal as well out of band emission will start coming if you want to know more about evm and uh, you know error vector magnitude and aclr you can refer my previous videos on 5g and other videos for rct testing and all there you, you come to know what is evm what is definition of it how it is measured and also aclr what is aclr what is the broad context of aclr and how it is measured so all the stuff will be there okay next comes dpd so dpd algorithm ideally what it does is distorts the input signal exactly the opposite way as the u u d as the u d means power amplifier test right and uh, you know the any r unit test r unit test okay so uh, rf unit the d unit test ideal world no so d u d distorts p d distorts signal so that output signal is linear it means you are nullifying the noise so therefore and i you know uh, your uh, amplifier will become uh, you know almost linear a significant computational power and all that requires computational power as well so let's look at this uh, figure you can see here that you know uh, this is the ideal uh, condition when you are giving input then output will be keep on increasing and the dot performance is like something like this when you add dpd then it is increasing like this okay it's not as easy as, as easy as i am saying but you know yeah, of course you know if you want more performance then you have to struggle a lot and you have to build a complex algorithm that's how it works right nothing is free of cost right therefore many people specialized in dsp algorithm are currently working on most of the time so this the particular document is mainly talking about you know dpd in testing perspective because you know rs uh, road squas is you know famous for you know their uh, equipment and uh, that is working on you know they are working on many various equipments okay so here they have discussed in you know testing perspective but still it is a quite good document to go for and you can attend that uh, webinar also so it is very useful webinar so amplifier design is maximize the define using perfect dpd perfect dpd means what it will exactly generate the uh, opposite you know uh, opposite noise signal that so that it nullify the noise so that it amplifier can operate in remain linear region for more you know some more extent right that's how it works right you can see here <coughs> by built in distortion distorting see which means running it means what see you are operating input you are giving input power to the amplifier then you are getting amplified uh, for example gain is the 20 dbm gain 20 db gain then if you are giving 20 dbm power then you will get it 40 db 40 dbm power right so if you are operating more in nonlinear linear region then what happens is i will give 10 30 dbm 30 dbm power also so that you know you will for example 20 dbm power but amplifier gain efficiency increasing means what gain is increasing therefore what happens uh, it will give me for example instead of 40 dbm i will get 45 dbm also okay when i am increasing the efficiency for example uh, 40% to 45% which means what if i am giving supplying the 20 uh, sorry 45% so i am you know for example you no know, uh, in order to generate 45 watts of power uh, sorry uh, generate uh, 45 watts of power i am consuming 100 watts of power if uh, earlier what was the case 40% efficiency means what it was i am i was consuming 40 uh, no 100 watts of power to generate 40 watts of power uh, signal okay that's how it works okay so if you increase the efficiency the gain will improve therefore the uh, you know uh, your output power also will increase right okay for the desired signal i am talking about okay not on the noise signal so how uh, maximize the performance of the device assuming perfect dpd so here they are doing what they are doing is you know how we can validate the device performance by pre distorting the given waveform uh, you can see here uh, algorithm and all that right so this is the testing perspective this is how it works direct dpd means what it does is you know you have a dot then you have a noise and then you know you have to generate the signals and then you know you pass it to that then dpd algorithm will take care of input signal any input signal pre distort it and then send it to algorithm and then you know uh, in real time signal but uh, it is very complex okay then it will be iteratively done right it is a feedback system so you will give input then you know uh, distort it and then you give it to the amplifier then it, uh, output power will come so then you will uh, keep on iterating in order to improve the power amplifier performance right so here uh, you can if you look at the result here this is the linear condition this is the dot performance without any dpd this is the you know clipped output 
beyond this it will not work so that's how it clipped out this is the dpd with the dpd you can see that it is enhanced in the one okay now uh, you can see that in a evm and the slr will improve right because slr why it is important evm is important way evm is you know for example evm means error vector magnitude so you are expecting some amplitude and phase but you know uh, you are not getting exactly one that so delta between them is you know evm and slr means you know uh, you are intending to amplify only the signal that is coming in uh, desired channel means desired frequency band bandwidth basically but if you are amplifying beyond that then you will get you know slr adjacent channel leakage ratio okay then dot these things are there okay influence of noise measurements so do you know dpd measurements how it is done so everything is explained here okay so very good document you can just you know have a look at it another document application note is linearization of rf amplifiers okay you can see that you know here also you can see that why it is linearization what is linearization and all that is given you can see here that input signal is that then you are you know applying the pre-distortion pre-distorted input signal then go to d dot this is how it works then feedback feedback loop will be there it will keep on you know uh distorting the you know creating distortions uh look up table from the total look up table and then find out you know uh pretty distorted signal whether pa performance output power is improving or not okay that's how it works you can see here that you know this is how it works so you can see here this is the output and then you know how it works all the you know so this is how it is tested so you have a signal generator to the input signal then you have a spectrum analyzer you are having dot then you will apply you know uh, dpd algorithms and then see how it goes so iterative direct dpd so you can you know find out this white paper as well just simply side search for it and you will get it then you can do it in simulink also you can see here that the input signal is going on then you have a dpd circuit you can design here and then power amplifier and then you, you using by using spectrum analyzer app and you can just find out so what is coming over here right so it is very you know a good useful uh, thing so how they have done and then all that is given here and uh, you can see here they're using you know matlab simulink you can model this uh, dpd along with the power amplifier and then you know tune it and then find out so which algorithm which method is giving you know better uh, uh, power amplifier efficiency you can also tune your algorithm as well okay this is how it works Okay, then uh, you can see that this is the evm for evm right so this is the symbol was expecting so this is symbol means what it has amplitude and phase in a uh, polar plot right if you plot any point that contain, contains amplitude means the length uh, from the origin what is where it is exactly the point is located and phase means from the uh, axis how much phase difference is there so this is how so if you have a deviation over here then you will see evm is very high okay not be right the case these are all explained here okay next is you are having you know linear is a power amplifier using eda here what they have done is they developed along with the cadence basically okay then you can see here the input signal pre distortion signal feedback all that is explained over here so here you know uh, what is linearization why it is required for the pa it is discussed over here pa often drive to close to a saturation for maximum power efficiency but for in non-linear operation, no, it is compression in memory effect. Compression means, you know, reduce the operating uh, region, basically. And then you can see here that DOT is there. Uh, this is the ideal condition, basically. This is the DOT performance. But uh, if you have hard clipped, then it will work like this. And if you are using DPD, then how much increasing, like, you know, for the, you know, you can operate for the amplifier in increased input power. Uh, like, you know, you can for many, uh, like, good efficiency, with the good efficiency, right? This is how they developed like you know so many softwares with that software you can find out you know how they are developing dpd algorithms and then there is a one visual system simulator this is for the simulator kind of thing okay and you can also use ads to simulate these things okay and then you can run the algorithm in the matlab then you can you know uh, link with the ads and then find out how dpd is working fine or not okay this is how they, this is how they developed here okay here they have a signal generation tool then you have you know uh, a visual system simulator then you have ese and then you know uh, the cadence this is done in cadence this is the you know tool developed by rns then you know they are doing these things uh, and to you know emulate the dpd once they get a super satisfactory performance then go go for hardware right 
this is how it works right you can see here that uh, you know uh, pa cadence and versus you know i try to dpd in the various issues and then you can see this is the procedure uh, to generate the stimulus and then using this and then rf simulation using stimulus and then you know create output file analyze the simulation result create a pre distortion signal first we have to analyze the simulation results then you have to find out uh, what is the distortion is coming then pre distortion signal continued dpd if no I repeat n times to uh, you know uh, improve the uh, pa performance if it is done finally it will go for this is the final pre distortion similar waveform that should be applied to the input waveform so to nullify the noise that is you know the noise that is spreading preventing power amp effect to operate in more learning region right so this is how it works okay then that's all okay then then another document is you know you can see the digital front end user guide for key to keystone uh, devices two devices user guide by texas instruments so very useful document okay here also you can see a lot of things about you can learn about dpd uh if you go here so what is cross factor detection so what is the function of it and all this informations are given here okay and dpd so all are in, uh, you know given here you can just you know, go through this document like you know digital front end user guide for ketone door devices user guide texas by texas instruments i was searching for this one i, I think long back uh, dpd related material then i got this material uh, you know document as well uh, somewhere okay then uh, you can see here the this uh, what is a cfr processing so you can see here that you know uh, what is cross factor direction sub module diagram how it look like so all this informations are there okay everything is there okay you can see here that you know cfr means what so everything is there okay so you have we have to remember that you know dpd always work along with the cfr right you cannot work alone because okay so how it is working you can see here how cancellation is done everything is done so this is the gain target so the cfr gain target is this much only so if a signal go beyond this then i will cut clip that signal that's how this cfr will work okay you can see here can you, you can see here so you are going beyond that then you are clipping that signal that's it okay and then you can see here that you know um, so many things are there and uh, dpd block is coming right you can see here that magnitude and my so how it is working what is the dpd function of dpd so all those informations are given here so lookup tables are given here how it works for the dpd and then you know all these informations are given over here you can just go through this document and then find out so coming to this you can see here that in this is the linear you know uh, this is the linear ideal condition but power amplifier will operate like this so best to operate in in this region only power amplifier okay because if you are going beyond see we have we are going beyond this then what happens we are also uh, there is a chance that you will you know uh, of course it is a, it is a highly probable that it will amplify you know uh, even noise signal also that's why we always operate uh, 2 dp 3 dp 8 dp 10 dp below the non uh, like you know this saturation point otherwise you no know, uh, that's why you know in order to make the uh, you know pa work fine and then because you know we operate uh, tend to operate that so you can see here without cfr dpd we are operating only in this region which means you know you can give uh, this input power to get this output but that's it we cannot increase the input power and to, to get the, you know it will not be like that we cannot improve the efficiency and also the therefore the gain then PA transistor, you can see here signal distortion and beyond it, this region and uh, you know output power drops below linear. So you can see here beyond if you operate below this region, your input power start increasing, but output power will be stagnated here, like this. Okay. So that's why you know the efficiency will go down, right? If you are operating in linear region, which means when you are start increasing the input power, your output power also will increase. When you are beyond this region, what happens is even if you increase the input power, output power doesn't change, right? It is just is you known as linear region. That's it. That's why you know we have to increase this linear region to a certain extent so that we can you know increase the input power and get to get the higher output power, right? That's how it works. So you can see input signal, then pre distortion signal, then output signal. Okay. How this input signal you know improved like this. Okay, that you can see. 
this is how aclr works right so can you see here uh, you know uh, this is our transmit signal this is the distortion right so we should uh, take care of this otherwise you know what happens is see what I, that's what i was telling so this is the transmission this is how this this signal only it has to uh, amplify not these signals right it's the out of band signal right so so that's why what happens is adjacent channel leakage ratio come into picture okay then you can see here that how the plots are done you can see here that how dpd is improving the uh, pa performance some of the functional blocks is given here and then you can see that you know how the what is the algorithm is given here pa protection algorithm and all that okay along with the pa there are number of you know things are given here so i hope it was useful okay i you find it useful if you have any comments please post it here in the comment section so i can try to my correct myself okay thanks all please do attend this webinar uh, webinar recordings are available it is very useful and then no, you can find these documents in that webinar itself okay so thank you all thank you for watching please uh, do post your comment and then you know to support this uh, moment and then you know you can you know if you have any questions please feel free to post your question there and i, I will try to answer my own so it will be a learning for me also thank you thank you all have a great day bye